Good morning. Good morning. My name is Matt Sauer, and I'm from Durham, North Carolina. In a 1977 Fortune magazine article titled, How Inflation Swindles the Equity Investor, you argued that corporate earnings in aggregate acted like a bond coupon and thus were negatively impacted by high inflation. Due to high inflation at the time, you posited a world where a 12% return on corporate equity would, was reduced to 7% after taxes and netted out to 0% in real terms. You have, been, you have been sounding downcast about the prospects for equities for several years, much of which we assume relates to extreme starting valuations. If inflation was decidingly bad for investors in 1977, isn't the relative lack of it in today's economy at least one mark in the plus column for equity owners? Is there also a future inflation expectation component in your warnings that investors are likely to be disappointed by equity results? Well, I would, uh, there's no question that the lack of inflation is is a plus for owners. I mean, the, the real return you will obtain, in my view, from owning American business, uh, if purchased at similar prices, the real return will be higher if we have peri long periods of low or, or close to no inflation than if we had long periods of high inflation. I don't think there's any question about that because that article went on to explain how you got taxed on nominal returns and, and, and fictitious returns in real terms. So your, your, your question is about which period is better for investors, a, a low inflation period over a, any long period is, is better um, uh, for investors. Uh, and the problem, as, as you pointed out also, was the starting point in terms of predicting modest returns for equity investors. The, the returns weren't necessarily so modest, I predicted, they were just modest compared to what people had begun to think returns would be during that long bull market from 1982 to 1999. There were polls taken by Gallup working with, I think, Payne Weber at the time, now they've moved it over to UBS Warburg, that showed the expectancy of people uh, in the stock market and, the, and those returns that people expected got up to 14 or 15 percent, as I remember. And they were thinking they were going to get 14 or 15 percent in a low inflation environment. Well, that, you know, that was dreaming, and uh, there's nothing wrong in a low inflation environment at all in earning, you know, 6 or 7 percent. That's probably as, as well, uh, well, it is as good as go uh, will happen, because in a low inflation environment, how much is GDP going to grow? Well, GDP, you know, if you have a 2 percent inflation and even 3 percent real growth, you're talking about 5 percent in nominal terms GDP growing. GDP grows at that rate, over time corporate profits will grow more or less at that rate. And if corporate profits grow at 5% a year, the value of those corporate profits, the capitalized value will probably grow at something like that over any long term with a sort of a normal starting point. And add that to dividends and you, you know, you will get 6 or 7% before frictional costs. The investors incur a lot of frictional costs, they don't have to, but they do. And that often is one and a half, two percent of their investment. So the math isn't bad. It's just, it's just, it's just bad for those people that got used to or expected very high returns based on looking in the rearview mirror back in 1998 or 1999. Charlie, my general attitude is just slightly more negative than Warren's. You've heard it, folks. <laughs> that isn't the end of the world. I mean, in, 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 in effect, if, if the people who own American business get 5 to 6% of the pie, $10 trillion economy now, someday a $20 trillion economy, but if we get, if we get 5 or 6% of the pie, those of us who put our capital out to produce goods and services for American business, for Amer American consumers, American population. Is that a, you know, I don't know whether that's, you know, is exactly what uh, somebody who designed the universe would come up with, but it doesn't strike me as crazy in either direction. You know, I think that uh, 
That's a lot of goods and services to go to people that put up the capital, but you, and you've got it, you know, 100 million plus people in the working force that are working to turn that out for you using your capital, and it provides a what I would regard as a pretty decent real return if you have low inflation. If you get into high inflation, as I wrote about back in 77, you could easily have the real return to investors get to a very, very low number, and perhaps negative. I mean, inflation can swindle the equity investor, as I wrote back then, and I used 7,000 words to explain why, and we'll be glad to send you a copy of that article if anyone's still interested. But inflation is the one thing that over a long period of time can turn investors' results in aggregate into a negative figure. And it's, it's the investor's enemy. Charlie, does that bring forth any further thoughts? I don't think you'll get perfect help on these subjects from the economics profession either. Uh, they have certain standard formulas. To an economist, when a manufacturing job goes to China, that's just so much productivity increase. And if you ask one, well, suppose all of the manufacturing jobs in America went to China. Wouldn't that be a little too much efficiency increase? And their answer would be no. And people get, actually get paid for thinking like this in major universities. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If what would get across the point, of course, is if all the teaching of economics got exported to China, in which at <laughs> that point a new insight would appear. Number six. Jack Hurst.